I know what it is. What? I know why Renvir is doing this cat and mouse thing with us on Twitter. He likes Twitter. foreplay. Yep. What? No. I, uh, he is intimidated that our energy and sense of fashion will so overshadow him that he's just, frankly, terrified to come on the channel and be with us. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, we're going to start talking about Topeka all the time now. She'll come on. What do you think? I don't think any Renvier is intimidated by <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction against the Corbin. I'm Rick. Especially not by somebody who has four shirts. Yep. Am I right, guys? That's true. It's okay, I wear the same, like, five shirts, just different colors. It's Here we go. <laughs> Today, uh, did I already do the intro? We just did an intro. We were talking about how Renvier... No, did I say, hey, welcome back? Yeah, you said welcome back, everybody, but we didn't say uh, Instagram and Twitter for juicy content. Instagram and Twitter. For Sorry. juicy content. I don't listen when I talk. I don't listen to you uh, when you talk. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Today we're doing a movie review. And it's of a 1987. Starring Runveer. Yeah, he was around then. Pro he's what, yeah. 35? He's, he's around 35? Yeah, so he's that's or, close to his birthday. Yeah, he's probably around there. Anyways. Okay. Uh, yes, 100% starring him. But it's a, uh, directed and written by, say the name. Yes, oh. forgive the mispronunciation of the name. Uh, Sigistam Sirabasa. Uh, starring Kamal Hassan. Yes. Uh, and it's a silent movie about an unemployed young man. That's true. It's true, and it's... It is. Pushpaka Vamana. No dialogue, uh, is I think actually what it... Uh, yeah, it's tech... Well, yeah, because it's technically not a silent film. No, there is sound. Film. Lots of sound. Aside from music, there's uh, lots of sound. Lots of sound in like the real world, but there's no, outside of a few inaudible speaking parts. Right. The entire film is silent, which I believe was India's first since the silent era. Ended, you are correct, sir. Right? Yep. Um, and I, there's some debate about where this is actually from. I think it's an originally a Kannada production. I thought it was Tamil. There's that, that, that other people say that as well. There's not really a language to it, so it doesn't I'm really leaning matter. toward I'm leaning toward Damel for a couple of reasons. First, it's come up. It's, it's, it's yeah, he's done many, him. many. Um, second, the writer-director. Who's also uh, Yes. Okay. And uh, the title, Pushpaka Vamana, is the, my understanding was it was the, the, the Damel title. And when they, this is weird. Like there was a Hindi release and it was just Pushpaka. Pushpak. Oh, yeah. Pushpak. That's weird. Why are you... Why are flower, you, I think it just why, flower. Why not use the same title? Well, they do uh, that all the time, for, yeah. for, Especially since there's no language yeah. thing. Why anyway, do you need so to I'm... Why yeah. do you need to release it in a different language? No, so I'm... If I'm describing it to people, I'm saying it's a download film. If I'm incorrect, yeah. let me know. Yeah, let me know, because there's... there's. I, I think you, Jimmy, I think, has reviewed this, and it's in his Canada playlist. Really? So let us know. I don't, I don't know. I'm not saying it's one or the other because I know people get very offended huh. if we call it one thing or another. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But let us know, like, in terms of the production house that. Yeah, did until it. you tell me otherwise, I'm it's, saying it's. Yeah. Dead. Yeah. I, I believe why you would. Yep. Uh, but, anyways, came out in 1987. 100% spoiler review. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. There's many versions on. I think, actually, India, you have it on Amazon. We do not. We do not. In the United States. Sadly. Uh, and, uh, but it is on YouTube, many different formats as well. But, Rick, your initial thoughts? And on, on YouTube, I got to tell you, the, the, the subtitles are awful. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> Just garbage. Just garbage. Some of the worst subtitles I've ever seen. <laughs> um, I actually wrote down here. Oh, you made a paragraph. I made a paragraph in a while. Uh, an astronomically courageous project celebrating the genius and inspiration of Charlie Chaplin. Mm -hmm and Jerry Lewis, mm. and Peter Sellers, mm. proving beyond any shadow of a doubt that Kamal Hassan cares more about elevated artistic expression than anything else. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Yeah. I really enjoyed it as I well. It was, it. it was a super, super, it, <laughs> cause you know, I don't think I know what to think first. Like, it's like, okay, here's an Indian film in eighties, silent. Right. I don't know where it's going from there. Yeah, and so it took so many different turns, and it's so it. it's like obviously a bunch of like questionable things that he did to to, was, a, to a person. I was and, describing it to Indrani, yeah, right, because she didn't watch it. I was mm -hmm. watching it while she was sleeping, and as I'm like, describing the film to her, she's like, "You're joking, yeah, right?" I'm like, no, this is 
this is real. And as I'm telling it, I'm laughing as yeah. I'm telling it back to her. Like, okay. And then after he does that, so then there's this guy who's very much like the Pink Panther movies, Peter yeah. Seller bad guys, yeah. who's trying to kill him with this frozen dagger yeah. and he keeps sticking it in the dummy. She's like, this is not real. Like, yeah. Yes, this is real. It, it was like, and this is one of the comedies that we can 100% get because yeah. it's all physical or like stuff there like was that. some it was both it was mostly lowbrow humor but there was yeah. some highbrow humor yeah yeah um but yeah so it's it's one of those that we talk about like in the parts of uh, Podosan, a lot of physical comedy there that had a lot of obviously um <sighs> i was about to sneeze oh this sucks wow i'm Man, so man, sorry man. that's awful it's the worst feeling. it's the worst it's so unsatisfying to ah. the sneeze come oh that's terrible very sorry anyways but yeah um it's the, a bunch of different comedy like that. I thought their love story was actually quite intriguing, and right. you, you you kind of like, oh, I hope they get to. That. Yeah, I, I loved how it ended. And yeah, <laughs> I did too. I knew you <laughs> that, would. That he just when spoilers was again. He just he loses the note that well, what did it say? Yeah, and well, then he's just living his life. The minute when I described the ending to Indrani, and I said she wrote him a note as well as the flower, but the note gets blown and it falls down this grating, and he doesn't get it, and he just runs to find her, and she goes driving away, and he just holds up the flower to her, and she said, "Oh, that's very Chaplin." I said, because she adores Charlie yeah. Chaplin, and I said, "Yeah, it, here's something else, and we'll, we'll get into the acting aspect of it as well." Uh, one of the things that I found most amazing among other things is the fact that he especially but pretty much everybody wasn't pushing the physical comedy or no. over exaggerating like the silent era yeah no no this was probably the most grounded physical comedy i've ever seen yeah i was impressed at that sense of really especially with him his sense of really wanting to embody the in what could just be literally jerry lewis stupid mm -hmm. but it he he kept it so legitimate and for him to do this at what i understand is this is him hitting the peak of his stardom yeah so I'm just going to directories going up it, it's forward. even more weird than when mel gibson did the passion of the christ here because when mel gibson did the passion of the christ he was big star here known for lethal weapon known for the uh mad max movie and being a gorgeous like he was voted one of the sexiest men so everyone's waiting for him to do his next big blockbuster thing then you find out he's going to self-finance an independent film about the last few hours of the life of Jesus and the whole movie will be in a dead language. Everybody was like, what are you doing? Turned out to be the biggest grossing rated R film of all time yeah. at, at the time. Yeah. And that is the comparable chutzpah that he has of, okay, I'm, the, I'm a big star right now. I know what they expect of me. Yeah, and I'm I, just going to do what I want to do. I appreciate the fact that, obviously, this had a lot of homages to Chaplin. Sure and, did. And the old, and Cartoons. E even, like, the, the Pink Panther, as you've... Like, very mm. Pink Panther at, at times. Very Pink Panther. Um, you even had some... Without the, copying. Yeah. Same it, thing with Chaplin. It, it was just... It was inspired by... That's one of the things I appreciate. It was, like, you could tell they were getting their inspiration from those those classics, but this was its own original thing and story and performances. Yep. I didn't think anybody was trying to be the tramp. I didn't think anybody Not was trying all. to be... Any of those different characters that uh, have been famously made by other silent artists. Yep. Uh, but I thought they did a really good job. Um, and the the whole storyline is so interesting because obviously it's this, this guy <laughs> who finds this drunk, <laughs> abducts this drunk, <laughs> ties him down, yep. basically so drugs him. Yeah, so he can live his life. <laughs> drugs him. Like... It, it happens in old Hollywood films as well. Like, there's these questionable things that the, yeah, morally the hero reprehensible they are, hero do. Our, our heroes do uh, in, in all old school types of films. But obviously at the time, you're just like, oh, that's funny. And now you're just like, he did what? Yep. <laughs> yep. He kidnapped a guy. And yeah. literally for days. But it was also very <laughs> Laurel and Hardy Three Stooges-y. Yep. In yes. that, like, at one point when he's putting the, the, the alcohol in him... And then when he's sitting on the toilet, he's mm -hmm. still got him gagged and he's doing the, the gag with the toilet. The guy who's all bound up is just giving him a look like. <laughs> yeah. It, I, yeah. Yeah. It There's was, so much to love about this yeah, movie. Yeah, it, uh, it was really interesting. And so I, I did see somebody say <laughs> something about why that, that was, the, the, the poor man uh, on the rich man. Because apparently on the walls of um, Kamal Hassan's place, 
he had a Karl Marx. Karl Marx. Poster, it's in my notes. Right? Yeah. And I so, walked down I mean, here. I said, that is a Karl Marx poster on the wall of his place. Which was apparently uh, big in that time in India. And so, like, when you, if you have researched Karl Marx at all, what he feels about the poor to the rich and right. what that means. So that might have been one of the, the parallels, that, especially if they have a poster. And that's what I meant by this combination of both highbrow and lowbrow humor, because yeah. that was the highbrow aspect in the middle of a lowbrow segment. Yeah. That was really smart. One of the funniest movies that made me, m moments that made me laugh out loud. And it's just a testament to the fact that Kamal Hassan was doing what is, I refer to it as groundlings comedy because there's schools of comedy here that a lot of the SNL alum have gone to and they just teach different approaches to comedy. So like Second City in Chicago has a different way they go about approaching comedy. I'm familiar with groundlings because I've done some studying and classes and stuff at groundlings. And one of the things about groundlings comedy is you never ever play for the laugh. No. You play for the believability in the moment and the, the, the hilarity of the circumstance is what makes it funny. And he did that in the moment where the magician comes over and he grabs one of the canes and he turns it into a handkerchief and walks on. He comes over, grabs one of the canes, holds it up and just goes. <laughs> the way he did it and the look on his face and then running because he got in trouble. I laughed out loud. I thought yeah. it was brilliant. I, there was a lot of really funny moments like when they were at, in the apartment and they picked up the wand and the guy rose yes. off the couch. <laughs> I thought it was actually really well done for 1987. All the magic. Yeah. All, I thought all the magic was fantastic. Yeah. But yeah, he picks up the wand and it makes him go up and then drop back down. Yeah. And Great. Anyway, let's talk about Kamal Hassan. Um, I thought it's one of my actually... He's done, is, he's done a lot of really good performances. Um, and I'd have to really... Because we've... How many movies have you seen? We saw the original Plane Shots and Automobiles. Hey, Ron. Uh, Naya Khan, right. I believe, which is the gangster one, right. right? And this one, and is there another one? I don't know. It's either four or five, right? It's either four or five. And so I'd say either, it's, it, 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 I don't know that my favorite performance of him, because this is kind of, even though it's, it's a really good performance, obviously his performance in Hey Ram I thought was really, really good. Right? I, I can't take anything away from Hey Ram, of course. I, I, I that... Naya it's Khan, I thought for a lot of time, even though there were some issues that we had with that film, Didn't I thought have an he, issue with him. He, yeah, no. But this is for me both my favorite. Oh, granted, we've only seen like we just said. Four, you can count on five, one hand. Yeah. This is my favorite thus far, both of his films and his performance. His performance. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it was a, a, and part of it is the importance level in the sense of he. In it, I was talking with Indrani about this as well. The 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 courageousness in. It isn't just in India, it's in every industry, but especially in India, where the hero is expected to do certain things. SRK's talked about how when he's made some stretches that he would like to make, he's aware of what his audience wants. Yeah. And it's very clear from what we know of his legacy now, because this was in 87, but from here on out, he just continued and became known for what is he gonna do next? Not, he's gonna be this, what we expect him to be. It's just, I'm gonna push the envelope wherever I can, whether it's in dancing, music, special effects. I'm just gonna make whatever I feel like I wanna make and I'm inspired to make creatively. And I absolutely now am beginning to see kind of what would be, for lack of a better term, the sunrise shining of what everybody says is so important about him, not just in Indian cinema, but cinema as a whole. Yeah. And it's one of those things, again, I'm like, wow. I used to teach theater and I didn't know about this guy. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, he's uh, he's super, super interesting because all of his films, even the little that we've seen, all so different, his roles. So it's, crazy different. Like, you have, obviously, a Marlon Brando-esque character in, in Naya Khan. And, you right. Have that even even though we really didn't enjoy the film, the Plane, Trains, and Automobiles one, uh, a, but it wasn't his performance, no, and that performance is so different. He's the only thing where they yeah. just walked away liking. Uh, and then it's so weird. Obviously, Hey Rum, which is a huge spectrum of a role. Yeah. Uh, and then this, and God, I think there's another one. I just can't remember I what do it was. too. I feel like there was another one. Wasn't there one? What was the one with the dancer? No, we haven't seen it yet. We've only seen the trailer of that one. We've seen a lot of songs from and that songs. One. Okay, uh, I feel like we've seen. That I think it's film. A, it's a Telugu about him being a classical dancer, right? Um, and so I, I do want to watch that one, uh, like, but it's it's hard to find a, a copy. Also, of it. Did, I laughed out loud because it was constantly happening until we realized what it is that he's listening to the Shaolin martial arts sounds to fall asleep. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I read somewhere, and I would love to see. Apparently, there's a segment in Kill Bill that Tarantino does that is a tip of the cap 
to Kamal Hassan. Really? Yeah. Well, I know that they, he's wanted him before. Yeah. Well, and that doesn't surprise me because I think Quentin, he's, he's like, he's, he's like Andrade. He knows everything he's about film. Film. Yeah. But yeah, his performances are so diverse. And he, I, I know this about it. He loves to push the boundaries, not only yeah. in his performance, but what they do in film. Yeah, in every way. Uh, in techno technologically. And he can do stuff. everything in film. He could literally, and he may have done this, he could literally do everything in a film. Yeah. Just, just let him, just give him everything. Camera, lights, sound, editing, uh, the choreography, the singing, the songwriting. And he could, he is a one man motion picture factory. Yeah. And does them all like at peak level. Yeah. Um, and so I thought he did a really good job of, of uh, <laughs> uh, portraying uh, the emotions of a character and being funny. And, and in a way that like, not all actors can do that. Be, not be at all. hilarious and be a character actor. And I, I thought everybody was that way. Like even the magician didn't yeah. get hokey. I really I, enjoyed her. I thought I liked their. They did a good job with no dialogue coming yes. up with a really good love yes. interest and story. I thought very I much. I was so. invested in. Them. So was I, and I, 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 I really liked watching the magician do his pretty solid tricks and sleight of hand throughout the movie. Um, I, I did. <laughs> He, he was he's a stereotypical silent era villain, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, but I thought it was funny. So funny. The, and like, that's what that's where the big Pink Panther stuff yeah, came in. That, was, that, that, right. that felt very Pink when, Panther. When he, when he goes to throw the thing and he sticks it in the electrical thing yeah. and gets electrocuted. It's like, that is so Peter Sellers, Pink Panther ridiculous. Yeah. And how, I, one time he just smiled because something was going to work to his... He was like... Fiendish, and yeah. I just laughed because he made that dumb smile. Yeah, yeah. I, first, I thought it was Govinda at first. Actually, did like, you? Really? I was like, is that Govinda? And I was like, no, okay, no, it's, it's not, not Govinda. Govinda. But like the fact that you know he was literally throwing ice daggers in an open uh, room and nobody noticed, and like one, three times. What? One of the reasons I laughed among many was there's this moment toward the latter part where he's back testing out his frozen dagger throwing. <laughs> And his freaking dummy that he's using, which, why does he have to go to such great lengths to test his ice dagger? Stab it in a pillow. He builds a human <laughs> dressed completely, and he had the legs crossed, mm -hmm. standing with the legs crossed over. Why? Just because it was insane. I yeah. loved it. Very, and then there was the Scooby-Doo moment with going in and out of the doors. <laughs> that Classic. was phenomenal in the hallway where yeah. everybody's coming in and out. That, mm -hmm. too... Those whole segments reminded me a lot of The Disorderly Orderly with Jerry Lewis. If you haven't seen that movie, if you haven't seen a lot of Jerry Lewis, just check your brain at the door and learn where Jim Carrey yeah. got what he got. It's from Jerry Lewis comedy. Just over-the-top, ridiculous, physical comedy. But again, as much as I saw Pink Panther and Chaplin and Jerry Lewis, it none of own. it felt copied. Yeah, it was its own thing. Which is a credit to our writer-director as well. We're talking a lot about Kamal, Kamal Hassan. Um, oh yeah, I thought he did a The, the really writing good and job. directing was just as good as everything else. And for a film that's right it's, under two hours, right? It, it kind of it you kept going for something that had no dialogue. Yep. Um, I, I, I music. Thought, yeah, I thought the music was a really good addition to it, and not only obviously making it like funny moments, like those quirky sounds sometimes when somebody falls or whatever, but the score behind it as well. Score was great, and there were moments where the score drops completely out and you just let it breathe for a minute. Yeah. Uh, as well as, in addition to all the other things that contributed to it being an enjoyable experience, is, so you've got this great writing director, and you've got all these grounded performances, and then you have the, the great score. I, I, we've talked over and over again about how we dislike dubbing. Mm -hmm. We want sync sound. I wouldn't want this sync sound. This worked better because it, it had overdubbing yeah. and, and some weird, one of my favorite dubbed moments in the whole thing, I was, I was dying, it was so funny. Toward the beginning of the film, when he's learning who this guy is, yeah. and uh, we are learning who this, this rich guy is, and he gets on the phone to call his wife, and the camera shows the pictures on the wall, and in the background you hear two people having sex, mm -hmm. but the sounds they're making yeah. are, um, Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh, oh, ooh. As the camera's slowly panning down. Yeah. That was fantastic. Yeah, that was great. Uh, so I was I was pleasantly surprised because I didn't when going into it I was like, okay, I'm interested because yeah. obviously it's yeah. an old Indian film that's silent with Kamal's son. It's intrigue enough because you don't get that one. No, yeah, it's very and like so, what the heck is but this I was about? Like, I had no idea what 
I didn't even know how much of a comedy it was going to be. Right. And so it ended up being like a really, really funny, a fun. really good film that I would I would recommend. I think anybody could sit down and enjoy this film. I honestly. totally agree. Especially if they're a fan of old school and film. If this happened to be on, which sadly, like we said, it's not here on Amazon. We, I believe we will slowly get there where the world will become even smaller and smaller and mm -hmm. you'll get films like this that are more easily accessible. Thankfully, it's on YouTube. But if, if I happened to have the TV on and I saw that this was on, I would be thrilled it's so fun to just watch the silliness and laugh and it is a very cute story yeah uh so let us know what should be our next kamal hassan we have yes, a lot please. to get to for kamal hassan yep uh once again i think we've only used like four or five uh if there's one we're forgetting i just i feel like, i know i, I feel, feel like, like we're forgetting an important one uh i feel like there's one but yeah what should be our next kamal hassan film let us know down below <laughs>